I would like to apologise for the craft that you're about to see before your eyes. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everyone, my name's Lynx. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where today I'm sending a base to an asteroid moon. And okay, is my ro my ro of course, of course it's not. Of course it's not going in the right direction. I made this mistake last time, I've made it again this time. I'm not very good at control points. But anyway, we're sending a base to an asteroid moon, obviously as the title would suggest. Now, the asteroid moon in question is actually close to home. It's actually the second moon of Rode, which is the uh, second of three moons. And I apologise for how big this fairing is, there was literally no other way, th th there probably was another way, but um, yeah, my engineering talent isn't perfect. Also my thruster weight ratio is like 2, it, yeah it's almost 3 if I put my throttle on full. But yes, this isn't a craft that has multitudes of delta V, it doesn't have that much fuel, it's not. No, it's nothing crazy, it doesn't have to go very far, but the, cr the rover on the inside, and yes there is a rover as well, the rover on the inside is something that I am quite happy with. Now it's nothing special but I'm happy with it. So I've got a couple of probes inside here that are going to do all of the automation. I, can, I only have control over the rover, nothing else I have control over. So it's going to be tough and I feel like I might struggle a little bit with the lack of control but I do have one probe so that's what matters right? Anyway we're, we managed to do the launch properly and that's what matters. Well I mean have we managed to do it properly yet? No. But it look, it's looking promising. We've gotten through the worst. At least it isn't a wobbly mess because if you see what's inside that fairing oh boy <laughs> you would be surprised it's not wobbling. Oh, it just wobbled a little bit there. Oh, look at that if I go. <laughs> yeah, it's good enough. I mean, it's not a perfect orbit, but it's not like we're going immensely far. Yeah, I think I've forgotten to actually put the fuel lines between these tanks and this center core. Oh, that's a shame because my center core is going to run out first. Ah, oh, well, I could just pump them all manually, couldn't I? Ah, I'm smart. I'm doing a smart. This is one of the first times that I've ever done a smart. Now, I'm really happy with the rover though, I feel like I've done a smart with it. And there we go, and I should now have a little bit more fuel. And I can just get rid of those stages. Perfect, now to reveal what's inside here, and you're gonna cringe. You, you're gonna you're gonna not like this. At first glance, actually, that doesn't look too bad, but if you look at the mechanism holding it together... Uh, yeah, um... I wouldn't say it's the most structurally sound part, I also just rotate and hit the boosters, whoops. It's not the most structurally sound part, you can see it's clipping through each other. However, the rover I'm happy with, now I need to put the brakes on because that's going to use a lot of electric charge. But yeah, if I just focus the camera here for a little bit so that I can talk about the rover, you can pretty much see what the setup is already. I've got some extending things here on the, I think they're called extendertrons, but that's like the most cringy ass sounding name. <laughs> I've got some pistons here which will just extend these wheels downwards and when I do that it's going to push the rover up and with that it means it's going to pull up this payload. Now this payload is one of the modules that's going to attach to this and there was no really viable way to store this except this way. So this bit's going to land on the surface now I've got no control over it so I need to make damn sure that it lands on the bottom. <laughs> and then the rover's just going to drive this bit up attach it and lower it down onto the ground. So I think if everything goes well I will have done a smart. So let's set a course for Armstrong. There we go Armstrong encounter. It's not a perfect encounter but it'll be good enough for the purposes of this mission. Now you might be asking why an Armstrong base? You've gotten this far in the video and you've not said why. And my reasoning is I'm going to attach more processing stuff to it which means crafts can go to Armstrong to refuel. And for those of you who don't play the mod, although you might have read the title and seen it's an asteroid moon, but Armstrong is an asteroid moon which means it's tiny barely any fuel required to land on it, anything can land on it, and if you can't, why are you in space anyway? <laughs> so yeah, crafts will go up to Armstrong, they'll refuel, they'll dock with the base or whatever, some it'll, either that or some it'll go up into orbit if they're too fat to land, which is, which is, you gotta be quite chonky to not be able to land on it, Armstrong, I'm gonna say. <laughs> but I'm gonna attach each module separately, I'm only sending up two, I'm sending up the core module and I'm sending up uh, just the, the utilities, it's, it's got a relay, it's got some RCS, it's got some fuel, it's got some electric charge, you know, it's oh my oh that is wibbly wobbly oh boy <laughs> Oh, we really do be wiggling though. Where's the fucking auto strut? There it is. There it is. Okay. I think we're all right now Oh, that's that's that just wonders. Look at that. 
that did that did wonders. There we go. We've got an Armstrong encounter now. Now it's not a brilliant one if we just have a look here. Eh. Oh, it, yeah, it's 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 bad, isn't it? <laughs> I do already have a rover, so I might actually land in that spot. But I actually know Armstrong's terrain has changed since you guys have last seen it. Ah, never mind. It's a new landing spot type. Now the rover just happens to be in a flat area, but it's probably floating above the terrain somewhere. It's time to use the last remaining fuel on this stage to sort of circularize. Now I should really be doing it at periapsis, and I should really have a better encounter than this but i'm getting away with it because armstrong's such a such a light moon oh that's you love to see it <laughs> i just sent the decoupler flying back into the stack all right we're gonna warp to periapsis and then i'm gonna do some maneuvery boys and there we go we've got those nice bone structures down there yeah, we've got the flag we planted ages ago you know what if i can retrieve the kerbal from that rover assuming it is still on the rover i'm not i'm not 100 sure but then we'd have a uh some crew in case i mess up this mission somehow oh we're gonna get a oh I, I was a little bit too generous with that burn hold on and there's my landing spot for today thank you for coming to my ted talk actually you know this looks like a nice place right there yeah you know, let's do an even more inefficient burn and let's just flip our orbit around. Perfect. Now I know where I'm landing. Uh, I gotta be really careful when I land. I just gotta ease this craft down onto the terrain, I think. Now I can use the wheels to stabilize a little bit and then I can send an engineer up to repair them if need be. But this is gonna be quite difficult and I don't even have my, my hot actions here. Like instant retrograde. I, I have to do everything almost manually, which isn't really a problem, but it's quite a delicate mission because I'm not able to really land on the base. That's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm going to like rotate the craft forwards like I'm doing now. But yeah, having barely done this ever playing Kerbal Space Program, I feel like this could be quite, quite difficult. I feel like I'm going to put the base around here somewhere. I don't think that's too steep. Nah, that's looking all right. Might just go out a little bit more. Yeah, efficiency. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just going to put it around here somewhere. It's slightly more flat where I'm going to land now. All right, it's time to begin the landing and I am so happy with Armstrong's new terrain. I have really made it a lot, a lot nicer to look at. Because before it was quite bland and repetitive and now it's, it's got a couple of features. Anyway, I need to focus on actually landing this thing because I've never done this. Let's just say I've not done it in a while. Three meters per second are hitting the surface. I should be all right at this speed, but I just, I'm just trying to hold my position. There we go. The RCS will make up for it. There we are. Um, so now I'm just going to rotate around and lower myself down, I think. Now I can. I have the joys of being able to quick save now. And with the RCS here and the low enough gravity, I should be able... To just ease myself down. Yeah, look at that. Not per se. I'm actually slowing down. This is working. This is a oh, the, this is an amazing speed to be falling at. Oh, this is great. Oh, brilliant. Now that I need to somehow flip this over. Actually, no, I can flip it over if I just wait for it to come to a stop. Undock this. Use the rover to push it over. That'll be fine. It will work brilliantly. All right, we've come to a stop, which means it's time to decouple. <coughs> <laughs> I don't know where that went. I do still have fuel, but... Nice! That that didn't blow up me, thankfully. That blew up the stage that I got to get rid of. So this is where I get happy, because I'm really happy with this rover. So brakes are on, and we just do that. Boom! We can lift this up, and then we can drive wherever I, where, wherever I choose. If I can English properly. And there we go. Now we just hope it lands the right way up. I'm just gonna, I might have to do quite a lot of pushing it around with the rover. I mean, it looks like it's going to work. It might go over a little bit, though. Well, that looks grand. Yeah! Now, I imagine most of you watching now know exactly how this is going to work. I just need to reverse out the way of this stage. I might end up bumping into it, unfortunately. This is quite some manoeuvring that I'm going to have to do. That'd be fine. I'll just, I'll just give it a bit of a push. Yeah! You know, what went wrong when parts touched the wheels, right? I, don't know, I need to line myself up very, very, very well. And by that, I mean just big... The, the, the turning circle on this vehicle is awful because of how wide the wheelbase is, but yeah, it's fine. So that's my target, it's this docking port here. And I don't know what that was, but... Oh, that would <laughs> that would be the decoupler from ages ago. All right, this is looking good. That looked like it worked out almost perfectly. All right. And I just slow down here, put the brakes on. They're almost touching, and then... I'm so happy with this because I can just do this. I can just lower the wheels, lower it to the ground. Oh, the magnets are picking up anyway. There we go, and we've docked, and then I can just undock this bit, 
and the rover can leave. And I'll be doing this for the remaining stages. Now the stages I've got to do left are the resource processing, the fuel tanks and proper communications because this is just the communications for this rover at the moment which just bouncing it from there onto this as well as the other components and if need be I can add some habitation to the top which is why that docking port's there but anyway guys it, a little bit of a shorter episode this time but thank you all so much for watching hopefully that was a little bit nicer to see than, than just it's just a bit of a deviation from the standard rockets and landings that I'm doing it's to land with purpose and that's not to get science this time it's to put this base on the surface so hopefully you guys enjoyed that these episodes do take a lot of effort to make so if you would like to help me out please consider subscribing or liking or sharing the video because that will help me grow so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all in the next episode